Hey guys, how's it going? So we are going to be doing a little bit of planting today up in the Versailles garden, but I wanted to start this video by giving you an update tour on the bricks and the stones leading up to our back kitchen door. Now it's not done yet, but it's been such a long time that I feel like an update at least is due. So this isn't really a grand reveal. I'll show you the things that we're still waiting on. Um, some are very obvious and some are little, uh, but it really has come together. Uh, there's nothing on the patio area yet. I still am waiting on furniture which was supposed to be here last week. It was pushed to this week and now I don't even know if it's gonna arrive this week. It's just one of those kind of situations. But all that said, let's take a look. Point of reference, we are here on the west side. Ta-da! This is where we're at at the moment. Now I wanted to start on this side because this brick walkway is complete to the driveway. Um, remember before we just, we had the brick edging and then there was kind of a rough step down onto very narrow concrete sidewalk. It was probably like, I don't know, from here to here-ish. So we were able to widen it out quite a lot, which is so, so nice. You'll see the stacked stone walls there. Aren't those gorgeous? So of course there was no stacking done here, but this flower bed was always way higher. So we always had compost coming, or mulch rather, coming down onto the sidewalk and making a big mess. We did have to forfeit the, we saved them, but the six boxwoods that were here, we figured we could just replant if we wanted to do that. But it's so nice to have a very defined border right there. And it meets up beautifully with the brick walkway we had put in last spring. Um, now, the bricks over here are a little bit deeper in color. So one other thing we have not done yet here, and you'll notice it more on the stones up here in the patio, we haven't cleaned it yet. When they put this polymeric sand down, it leaves kind of like a fine dust on top of everything that looks white. Uh, so we need to clean that and then possibly seal it to deepen the colors. So that's still in the works, hopefully, to get that done. But you can just see what this whole area, like what it's become. This right here was such a like kind of a neck down area. It was hard to get around this uh, corner in particular, like as you were walking up this way. So you can see down here, that's where we stopped. Let's go down this way. Aren't they pretty? Look at these rock walls. They're so gorgeous. We stopped here because we were waiting to do this patio area very last because you know we had to have that tree removed. So they had to get in with their big truck and lift that big root ball out. And we figured, well, if we did rock work here, it would all get messed up. So uh, we decided to do this phase very last. Hence the abrupt stop. So they can easily just pick up the little barrier thing that they put down. It's like that thick plastic with the pins. They can pick that up and then just carry on. Um, so anyway, that's where that's at. Let's take a look. Look at that. Isn't that an improvement? Oh, you can walk down it like a couple of people side by side. You can walk with groceries and not brush up against a bunch of stuff. It's just, it's so, so great. Now, a couple of things, very minor things we're going to swap. There's a couple of rocks with orange edges that I want to swap out. This is the same stone that we had put on the floor in the Hartley. Um, I think, what was the name of it? Was it like Oklahoma blue or, or something like that? It's mostly gray. There's tons of gray, which is what I wanted. I just wanted kind of a medium gray color because we deal with so much hard water. I would love to have like a deep kind of rich color um, but with our hard water it's just not worth it it's so much maintenance to keep it looking nice so I wanted a medium gray but the one downside with this rock is that some of the edges are orange which may mellow a little bit over time you know being exposed but you can kind of pick through the, the stones sometimes like one side will be orange and the other side will be gray um, so we are going to go through there's just like a small handful like five stones that are showing orange but you know with the cool undertone these bricks have it's they're kind of more on the pinkish side the pink with the orange it's kind of jarring to my eye I mean honestly once we have this planted up I probably wouldn't even notice it but since we're still in like not finished phase I thought well we may as well swap those few out it would be minimal effort and then I wouldn't ever even have to think about it again so we went with five feet wide here as opposed to 20 inches you guys 20 inch sidewalks they were so narrow and then of course I made it worse because I planted lavender alongside it and I planted the lavender pretty close so that we had very uh, little walking space when the lavender had matured. It was pretty and it was very cozy, but it's not very practical. Now we can get carts through here. 
Ooh, and we can go around the corner with the cart without snagging anything. It's so awesome. Uh, we have thought about having the iron work from the front stairs replicated for these back stairs. I'm gonna go up there and show you. I think it would be like icing on the cake. Even though we never use that entrance ever, I think it would just add some visual interest right there. And we are gonna swap that door too. Oh, the sun. That iron work right there. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I think it would be beautiful and it would tie the front to the back, right? Kind of carry on some of the same detail. On our way back here, I just wanted to give you the view from this side, because you know, before we had that pillar with the pot, which I'm gonna do something maybe similar-ish um, here. So it has changed a little bit, but I love looking at that stack stone. It reminds me of home. I mean, this is home, but my home growing up. You guys know that my parents' house is on a hill and it's all terraced. And um, fortunately, most of the rock walls were there when they bought the house, but uh, I just love all those rock walls. And I wanna take every opportunity, any like slight elevation in any of our flower beds, rock wall. I just want to pop them in wherever we can. Also, they had to dig this whole area up because this right here is where our water and electrical all originates. And so they had to um, go this way right underneath. They were kind enough to take their time to dig underneath the roots of the boxwood hedge. Isn't that nice? They did such a good job. Uh, so the boxwood hedge is still intact. I did not want to lose that. But anyway, it, it messed up everything else. They missed the Japanese maple too. That's a Katsura Japanese maple. Um, and it'll be red here shortly once it gets cooler out. Um, but I'm going to replant this whole area too. I'm thinking I had ferns and Brunnera that I had transplanted. I'm thinking of going back in with Brunnera. I think that big, bold silver leaf would be beautiful. And then we recently planted the Hakana Chloa and I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, back to the brick. Oh, you know, just looking at this, I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so for those of you, maybe we can uh, throw up an image of what this looked like before. It was not bad. It truly wasn't. And you know, whenever we do a project like this, I always get nervous because I am a creature of habit. I do not like change and I do not like, um, which is crazy, right? Because we do so much changing around here. I just get comfortable with a certain way that things look or whatever, and I just work with it and I'm fine with it. Um, so it does make me nervous whenever we start a project, even if it's gonna be better in the end. I'm like, but what if it isn't? This is fine. But it was uh, alternating colors of concrete. It was gray, pink, gray, pink, um, which, you know, might have been the style at one point, but some of them were starting to heave a little bit uh, and they just were, you know, it just wasn't us, I guess. And the biggest thing was that leaning tower of pavers that was the retaining wall where the rocks are um, just like directly in front of us so right here remember that leaning wall of pavers those pavers found a new home they went to our neighbor's house on the very end of our lane the one uh, the neighbors we planted those five maple trees for last year is that last year i think that was last year so that has been a major improvement right there seeing that beautiful stack stone uh, we did um, have to cut out, of course, I mean, the sidewalk came to, to about here, about four bricks in. So it was from here to here. And that was it for walking around this corner. Um, and there was a weird like piece of metal with a bolt in it through the concrete that I never understood. So we did have to cut one boxwood out. This is my last area of boxwoods I need to trim. I should have done that before, <laughs> before this tour, but you know, real life. So we had to cut one boxwood off the end and then um, they had to kind of hack this hydrangea back a little bit, which is totally fine. But our wall of hydrangeas will be perfectly fine. Uh, the lamium will fill back in. It's just, just perfect. Before we get too far, so yeah, repeating that ironwork right here and then swapping the door for something. I mean, something similar. I want something, something glass, but maybe something with black accents. I don't know. Also, you will notice we went with a paver. So it's the same pavers that the wall is. I had a moment where I called my mom. I call my mom a lot, um, especially during projects like this, because she's been through so many of them and she's got very good taste. And so, and I feel like she gives me an honest opinion. And I just told her I'm at kind of a pivotal moment where I need to decide between brick and flagstones. Either one will be beautiful, I think in the end, but I feel like having that brick walkway 
and then putting brick in the patio, which is what my initial thought would be, would be too much. I mean, I'd have to come off of this and then start a different pattern in this area, if that makes sense, which, you know, I don't know if that would detract from kind of like the traffic flow pattern. And this, like in the end, Aaron was like, we can change it out if it just it doesn't work. Um, and then of course, like I told you, we need to clean it. This is quite a bit more deep, all of this. This looks white right here, and these will not be white. They'll be a deeper gray, um, kind of reddish pink um, when we get it all cleaned. But I thought it might be visually more interesting. I mean, most of this will be covered. This is where the new furniture is going. And the furniture is beautiful, you guys. You know, we had the concrete table here with a couple chairs that were never the right height for it, so we never used it other than uh, occasionally for filming, and then I used it for taking pictures of stuff. We decided, because this is on the north side of the house, it's always shaded here. It's right by the kitchen. Let's put like a conversational group seating group in this area. We will use the heck out of it right here. So I ordered a love seat and two chairs. Um, and then, like I said, it was supposed to be here last Monday and now we're into like almost at the end of the next week and it hasn't shown up yet. So I don't know when it's gonna get here, but I'm excited to place that here, to place some pots around. I got a new tree here, a final fire maple. Isn't that gorgeous? I haven't even potted it yet because I don't really want to choose the pot until I have the furniture sitting here. And then we'll move the blood good Japanese maple back probably in this space. And then this one will maybe go over here. Also, when we clean it, this color will match the old brick a lot better. So, you know, it goes off this direction into the fireplace area where there is a brick patio and it looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. I just didn't know about doing more and more and more brick. So anyway, that's why we decided to go with this. And when I was talking to my mom, she was like, yes, do the same stone you're doing with the rock wall. You should do that on the floor. I think that would tie it together. It would look really pretty and it would be um, a little bit more visual, like interest and texture in that area. Anyway, this flower bed, isn't that beautiful? So another orange, couple orange stones there, not a big deal, totally not a big deal. But again, we're still in the working on it phase, so we're gonna swap those out. But I'm ready to plant. That's another reason why I wanted to give you guys an update. I've got little pockets here and there where I wanna put some fall things, like some little fall color pansies, things like that. Um, so we'll be doing that here shortly. We had coleus in this area just a little bit of that flower bed had to be carved out because the brick walkway kind of curves curved into it i mean we were able to keep the boxwood here which was a little bit looked further back in the bed than it is now um, and then yeah we were able to keep this boxwood too that rock kind of pushes right into it but i think we'll be okay there and then over here this is kind of one of the other things so i wanted to explain <laughs> explain why i mean i don't know why this was poured offset from the door i really don't um, we are planning on, when we do some work on this house, we are gonna have a wraparound porch built on. All of this from about, in fact, we'll have to move the rock. Um, we are going to push out a little bit and um, this rock right here will go and we will um, do a, a deck. I mean, it'll be a step up right here instead of here. So all of this will be covered. We are gonna have some patchwork done on the concrete here. Um, in the meantime so that it kind of tidies that up but it's been kind of hard to find somebody with the way the building market has been in our area it's starting to Im improve a little bit but it's been wild wild like to where nobody's interested in doing smaller projects like this um so i i don't know hopefully we get that handled here pretty quick i would love to not go through a winter with like empty patches with mud and stuff right by the back kitchen door um, but we decided to take the brick walkway centered with the door rather than with the piece of concrete. In fact, when they started making the brick walkway, they actually did it the whole length and it looked so odd, um, like even more odd than it kind of does right now. And we decided, no, you know, in the end, you won't even see any of this. So all of that won't be seen, but you will see how this lines up with the door because the door won't change. Um, so that was the most important part to us. We did keep the flower bed here. You notice that we did uh, remove the boxwoods and the hellebores right here because it just, they weren't straight. So the concrete that came off of this came off at an angle. It was so weird. I never noticed it before. But when you start lining everything up and straightening things, the boxwood started about where the beam is and then they went like, Meh, out like this. It was so strange. 
Um, and we decided since we wanted to broaden this area and use it more for our family and for entertaining and things, that it would be better just to remove that and do, I wanna do something similar in a different area. I can't wait to get the stones clean. Like this is more the color that we're gonna be seeing, not this. Isn't that weird? So yeah, I've just been kind of holding off because I, I just really wanted to show you a finished product, but it's just not reality. I did have them um, build the patio around this boxwood. So this one can never die. You may never die boxwood. We built around you. This one was here when we moved in and I think it's so cute. And then walking back out, I just, you know, I'm so proud of this side because this side is all us, you guys. Everything that was over here and everything that was over here, we tore out and started over. I, you know, minus the big old trees and stuff like that. But like we did the brick walkway with the circle area there. We've done a lot of the plants, most of the plants. And then, um, you know, over here, this, all the whole west side was our design um, and our work, you know, putting it together. And, you know, that makes me happy. So now coming off of those types of areas into another area that we're starting to make our own is just such a fun thing. And what a huge blessing it has been to be able to do these projects, honestly. I mean, a project I hadn't even really thought about. I mean, I thought about it. I thought about one day I would like to change this entryway area, but I just didn't, I don't think I understood the impact the Hartley greenhouse would have on, on our garden. I mean, not only does it make huge impact visually and adds another beautiful space, but I didn't realize all of the trenching and all of the, the stuff that would go on around it to get that building operational. But it, you know, in the end, Oh, and Aaron always says, just rip the Band-Aid off. You know, let's just clear the area and start it over again and kind of make it ours. Um, and I'm just so, so much more of a slow mover. So it has been nice to see some progress happening in this area, even though it's not completely done. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can at least get like the little concrete area patched. If we have to put boards over the big powder area where the brick patio used to be out there um, over the course of the winter that will be fine but i'm hoping that we can get that done i think what we're going to do is repeat the same flagstone patio uh, over in that area so that we have the same stone we're using throughout so we've got it in the hartley floor and that that stone is the same but it's been snapped so it's in more like square and rectangular shaped pieces and this is of course more naturally shaped and we'll use the natural shaped stone here in this well we did in this patio area and then we'll use the natural shaped stone in the other area as well and I cannot wait to show you what it all looks like once it's been cleaned and sealed and you can actually see the colors I think that will um, improve everything visually a huge amount but we've got really fun plans for this area you know I'm ready to get after some of these pots um, Benjamin and I have already been scheming about where we're gonna put pumpkins and I got some really cute lanterns I actually have them right here I got them on sale like big time on sale. They were under $20 a piece. So I had to pick them up because those are big lanterns and they're glass and like they're heavy. They're heavy metal and glass. I love it. So we're going to be incorporating those with some candles, pumpkins, corn stalks. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that so much. And we just thought, you know what? We have no idea when this is actually going to all be completely done. So that's your update for now. And then maybe once we get some more stuff done, well, we'll just bring you along for it. As we, you know, put the furniture out and we, you know, do the back porch up for fall, we'll just bring you along and show you how that goes. Anyway, task at hand, the plants. These are two varieties of flocks. In fact, these are two varieties I have featured before. I love them where they're at so much that I ordered seven more of each of the varieties so that I could amp up the display because, oh, they've been such good performers. These are both in the Luminary series. This one's called Ultraviolet. Very good name for it. Grows about three feet tall. Can't remember the spread. About 32 inch spread. I mean, it's a pretty decent sized perennial. Zone three through eight. So very winter hardy. It attracts pollinators. But the cool thing about both of these luminaries is that, you know, a lot of the older varieties of flocks are prone to powdery mildew and things like that. And these are not. Still a good idea to give them good airflow if you can, like proper spacing, um, but they just aren't afflicted by that like the older varieties. And I know a lot of people deal with that sort of thing on flocks in particular. Uh, this variety is called opalescence. There's a tag right there. And I just, those flowers are so gorgeous. That delicate pink with the dark eye and then there's a little yellow in the center. It just gives them that glow. I probably should look up some new adjectives for for flowers. I feel like I use the word glow a lot, but these glow. Oh, they're so pretty. There's just such a delicate 
ness about them. Now these, you can, you can tell just by what they look like in their containers, they stay a little bit smaller, but not much, like four inches shorter, same zone and all of that. And these are in the same general area, but they're so different in color that I feel like just put them together. They're awesome. And these start blooming about midsummer, so typically towards the end of June through the rest of the season. There's still some color on ours right now, but if you take a look at these, they're just budded up. There's buds everywhere on these plants. And it looks like based on our forecast, they're gonna have a chance to bloom. I mean, here we are about the 1st of October, and yesterday we were in the 80s, like high 80s. The day before it was 90. Um, and then like today is 70 something, and it's chillier in the morning. I'm in a vest right now uh, because it's getting down to the low 40s, but that's it. There's no temperatures in the 30s showing at all, even in the 10 day. Our average first fro uh, frost date in our area, where zone six is October the 4th, and that's nowhere near freezing at this point. Um, and then it's going back up into the 80s at the end of the 10 day. So it's perfect planting weather and perfect time to get those boxwoods done. I need to get those all trimmed up. Okay, we're gonna go the long way here, all the way around. Annuals looking peak. Isn't that awesome? That's why I haven't felt a need to do a lot of fall planting. Trees are looking good. Showing their fall color earlier than ours. A little shock, I guess, most likely. Well, they don't have a lot of color on them right now. I thought they had more on them. They did last week. That's when I should have probably done this project, but at least you can see the height that they get. And they were in color for so much of the season. Like I really noted how beautiful they were. And so you can see we've got like this little patch of ultraviolet here. There's a little patch of um, opalescence. We're gonna dig this Japanese maple out. It's just not doing well at all. Um, so there's the opalescence right there. Uh, we're going to just add the new ones in around these and I'll give these a quick deadhead so that they look a little bit more fresh. Uh, but I think it's gonna be really nice. And in this area, we do have a Tollymore spruce. There's some Queen of Sweden, uh, David Austin roses. Uh, there's some Amsonia over there, which we've already cut back. There are poppies in here. They're the white poppies with the black center. And then there are a whole bunch of oak leaf hydrangeas, new ones we planted around this way. Um, it will look better once I get this out too. Maybe we'll do that this morning as well. And then we've got some Dervella uh, Kodiak orange right there. There's a totem pole panicum kind of, you can kind of see it between the tree and the shrub. And then a June snow dogwood. I love how this tree grows. It kind of has like a horizontal, growth habit and when it's in bloom it's so pretty red fall color on it okay so let's get these planted and then we'll take a look Got them all planted and watered in. They look really good. So starting kind of in this corner, I've got the Amsonia in here, which you can barely see right now. And the phlox kind of goes back behind one of them. I think in this area here, I'm gonna put some Eupatorium possibly, something that gets a little bit taller, um, providing some very late season interest, something like that. I don't know exactly what I'll put there. Maybe some of that like tallish Rudbeckia. That would be really pretty. Um, and then of course, this will get a lot taller. So these four look a little short, shorties. They're very fresh and beautiful looking though. I deadheaded the ones that are currently here and then I planted two more to the right of it. So we'll have like this nice big, oh no, three more, three more that goes back like that. So we'll have this nice beautiful drift of the ultraviolet and these three swing around the poppies that are here. There's also a poppy, you can barely see it, but there's one right there in that open spot. So that oak leaf will fill in this section here and then the poppies will be back in here 
with the ultraviolet and then the opalescence starts in here. I added three more to the left of what was currently here. And then that oak leaf looks so good. There's cafe cream foxglove. I um, cut some back that were already spent and then I shook the seeds all over in this area. So hopefully we have a nice stand of those. Those aren't quite ripe. Those seeds aren't ready yet. So I'll do the same thing with those or I'll just leave them through the winter and let them drop naturally. And then just beyond this oak leaf, which gosh, even if these don't bloom, they're just so pretty. The leaf structure, oh, love it. And these will provide the red fall color too. We've got four more of the opalescents. I was gonna maybe tuck some more back in here, but you know what? These get six to eight feet <laughs> tall and wide. They're gonna fill in and be a nice thick hedge back in here. But I think having the opalescents kind of come to where the Russian sages will be really nice. And of course I had to access pretty much everything from back behind. There's kind of an opening back in there. And I'm gonna be uh, tackling this flower bed probably this next season. Let's walk around there. Oak leaf's looking good. Russian sage that doesn't get any water. Zero water right here. In fact, this is exactly where the old fence was, right here. And this was growing out in the gravel. And we kept having to like cut it back because it would you know, hit the cars that would drive by right here. And then um, I think this is a hellenium right here. I don't know, it's really tall. Blooms big old yellow flowers all over on it later on. Like it's not even starting to bloom yet, but it's all butted up. Really pretty, gets no water. We need more of that in our lives, don't we? But anyway, this large section right here, you know, that we cut out last year, I thought we would tackle it this year, ended up having a ton of projects going on. So anyway, it can wait right now. It can wait for sure. And we've reached the point in the day where it's time to shed a layer. Kind of nice this time of year, I love it. I love the cooler mornings. It just gives me so much more motivation to get out here and get some stuff done that has been kind of hanging out, things that I've been wanting to do maybe through that really hot part of the summer. Um, anyway, we've, we've been just enjoying such a beautiful fall so far. And that is it for projects today. I just wanted to get those flocks planted. I did water them all in and there is a drip system in this area already so we don't even have to add anything. We'll watch them um, and give them any supplemental water that they may need but they probably won't need any this time of year being so cool um, things just oh, I don't know things just get along with that cool weather beautifully and I hope you guys enjoyed kind of seeing the current state of affairs with the brick walkway area I know so many of you have been asking for it and um, yeah it was just time it was time to show you what's going on with that done or not and then like I said we'll bring you along for everything else that we do in that area this season so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one Bye.